fine. Oh, so, um, next bit is very hard to talk about. That's probably the most grisly detail. She is an intelligent manipulator who chose to kill her parents callously. Cheer up, at least you caught the bad guy. Today's case is one that is going wild in the media. A woman lives with two dead bodies in her home for four years before ultimately admitting to what she did and even making jokes with investigators. Cheer up, at least you caught the bad guy. This case is one that sounds stranger than fiction, but I assure you it's real. And once you hear the context and the details for this case, you'll be even more stunned at what this woman was capable of. With that being said, Let's get into the case. Lois and John McCulloch were living in Great Battle, Essex, England, and were the proud parents to five daughters. 70-year-old John had worked as a business studies lecturer at the Anglia Ruskin University. He was described as being hardworking, caring, and passionate about education and writing. He worked tirelessly in his career at the university, where he worked for several years. In his free time, John enjoyed golf and snooker, which is a game similar to pool or billiards. His children went on to say that he was always telling jokes, making those around him laugh. John's wife, 71-year-old Lois, was described as kind, careful, and thoughtful. She was very curious about the world, making friends all around the world through her hobby as a pen pal. For those of you who don't know, a pen pal is someone from another part of the world who you write letters back and forth with. It's actually really cool. I've done that before when I was younger, and you really get to learn a lot about another person and their culture. This was something that Lois loved doing and kept up with for many years. Lois also had a passion for history, making sure to keep up with the workings of the royal family. John and Lois were both such hardworking people throughout their lives, raising their children in a relatively old-fashioned, strict household. Their children described that the couple were functional rather than affectionate, but in their household, it seemed to work. John was known as being very structured and routine-oriented, while Lois was said to have OCD about cleanliness, needing things to always be in tip-top shape to avoid spreading germs. They loved vacationing to the coastal areas in the United Kingdom. They loved being seaside, going on long walks, and visiting any seaside attractions they could. They were hoping to eventually move to the coast at some point in their retirement. Both John and Lois adored their grandchildren and overall really valued spending time with their family. Family was their pride and joy. At the time, John and Lois were living in a home in Great Battle, Essex, as I said, where they had lived for 20 years. Neighbors described John and Lois as being quiet and keeping to themselves, never really making efforts to talk to their neighbors or really anybody in their community. When John would come out, he always looked like he was in a hurry or made himself busy with something. Meanwhile, if Lois was walking down the street, she would look down at the pavement and avoid eye contact with neighbors. According to reports, the couple's youngest daughter, then 36-year-old Virginia, had been living with her parents for around five years. Back in 2017, Virginia had worked as a bartender at a local pub. After that, she told her parents that she was working as a web designer. Neighbors described that they also occasionally saw Virginia, saying that she was always pretty nice, but a little bit odd. She was friendly enough, not making too much of a stir in the neighborhood. She could be a bit chatty with the neighbors at times, not really responding much to social cues or understanding maybe when a conversation should be over. But overall, Nothing about Virginia stood out too much to neighbors, and she was generally described as nice. Now, even though Lois and John mostly kept themselves and didn't socialize too much with neighbors, they did have their close-knit friends who they kept up with. John specifically, he would always meet up with this one friend most Fridays for a drink at the local White Horse pub. Like I said, John was a man of routine, so this was something he kept up with. So, this friend was a bit surprised to learn that by June of 2019, John and Lois decided to up and leave the area and move to the coast without really any warning. Those around Lois and John started to see less and less of them around this time, until months started passing and no one heard from either of them. Again, neighbors only saw them a few times a week to begin with, but now they noticed that John and Lois were never coming out of their home. The curtains were always drawn, so no one could ever see what was going on inside either. 
However, when questions started to arise about Lois and John's whereabouts, Virginia told neighbors that she was actually staying at the house to oversee repairs being made to a retaining wall. She told these neighbors, as well as other friends of the couple, that they moved to Clacton, an adorable coastal area northeast of London. At that time, no one thought to question this. As I stated, John and Lois had always dreamed of moving to a coastal town upon retirement. Plus, some friends had received postcards from Clacton signed by Lois. They were still receiving communication from her, which assured everyone in their lives that they were out there happily living their lives and soaking up their retirement. Meanwhile, other family members, including their own siblings and children, started asking questions as well. Virginia's siblings would always ask her to see Lois or John, but there was always a reason for them not to. Virginia would say that they're out of town in Clacton. Either that or they weren't feeling well and didn't want company. Years started passing without any family members actually seeing John or Lois in person, but it wasn't for a lack of trying. Again, anytime people would try and visit, they were either out of town or sick. And again, Lois and John kept to themselves for the most part anyways, so it wasn't that hard for some to believe that they may have just left to their coastal retirement and weren't making an effort to reach out to family. However, by the fall of 2013, John and Lois's general practitioner became concerned after realizing he hadn't seen or heard from them in years. Since 2019, Virginia had canceled multiple appointments for them on their behalf, always having a variety of reasons for why they were canceling. I want to note that part of the reason it took so long for this doctor to notice or raise concerns is because, obviously, 2020 and 2021 were marked by lockdowns and people not really leaving their homes. So them not going to their appointments those years and reaching out to family or visiting people in person, that didn't really arise any concerns because nobody was going to their appointments or visiting family. However, when things opened back up and still years were passing without seeing John or Lois, their doctor did become worried for their well-being. So by September of 2023, their general practitioner called the authorities requesting a welfare check on John and Lois to make sure they were okay. When officers responded to their last known address, they were met with Virginia, who had excuses for why they weren't there. She explained that they were always out of town, traveling a lot. That is why no one had seen or heard from them. But the more officers spoke with Virginia, the more they got the feeling that something wasn't adding up. Even if they were enjoying retirement, traveling around, four years is a very long time to go without contacting anybody, not their children, grandchildren, or their own siblings, all who they loved dearly. Based on the fact that no one had seen them in so long and just seeing how dodgy Virginia was acting, officers were able to obtain a warrant to raid the home and search for any sign of John and Lois. Now, this raid was captured on police body cam footage, which has been released to the public. It's been viewed many, many times and shared all across social media. So if you haven't seen it, I would be surprised. But for those who haven't, or you've seen it, but you want to see the full footage with context, I will be sharing that in just a moment. In the video, we see that immediately upon entering the home, they cuffed Virginia, detaining her on suspicion of murdering her parents. She is very calm and collected, allowing police to cuff her without any struggle. Right as they cuff her, she confesses to murdering her parents and wants to show them where their bodies are located. She had placed her father's body in his study, surrounded by a homemade mausoleum built out of masonry blocks. Meanwhile, she wrapped her mother's body in a sleeping bag and then stashed her in a wardrobe upstairs. No one in here at the moment. Hold on. The police. Got it. Stay where you are. Stay where you are. Hey. Show me Stay where you are. Show me your hands. You there? Do you need that? Yep. Do you need that? Yeah. Oh. The time is 12 12. You're under arrest suspicion of murder against. Jonathan McCulloch and Elias McCulloch. Yeah, okay, she doesn't say anything, but it may harm defence. Do not mention or in question, so I'm just not anything to do with the business. Okay? Right, your rest is necessary for a point to the future. Is there anything in the pocket we should know about? Yes, there is. Can I take you to it? No, you can tell me. Can we go in there for a second, just so I can tell you something? Yeah, sure. Okay. 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 Ok
Yeah. 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 A little bit more complicated. Okay. Um, can I? That's why I said, can I go upstairs and show right, you? Can you explain it to us, please? Because we're trying to preserve this. It's now going to be seen, so we need to preserve this the best we can. So I don't want you to have you walking up there. All right. Because it's, it's that. That's for your well-being as well as ours. Oh, no, up, up, up. Okay. Up. So what? Thank where you. where, where will we find your mum? Well, where will we find um, your mum? Okay. So upstairs there are about five wardrobes. Yep. Um, it's behind the bed, but back next to the sink. That's the second one. She then talks about how she killed her parents. She admitted that she killed her dad by putting his prescription medication into his alcoholic drinks to overdose him. She gave it to him in the evening and then found him the next morning dead. She said that she also tried to kill her mom the same way, giving her medications and her drink as well, but it didn't kill her. It only sedated her. So she then decided to beat her mother with a hammer over and over and over again. Then, to finish her off, she stabbed her multiple more times in the chest with a kitchen knife. She said that she didn't originally plan to kill both parents, but ended up killing her mom as well because she was afraid she would find out what she did to her dad. When speaking with police, she said that when she was hitting her mother with the hammer, it felt like someone badly playing the xylophone all willy-nilly. This is her mother she's talking about. Then, after the murders, Virginia went to the local Chelmsford City Center where she purchased plastic gloves and those sleeping bags using her dad's bank card. As she was explaining all of this, she was talking in a very matter-of-fact, calm manner. She didn't seem too upset or remorseful for what she did, though she did say that she knew this was coming, meaning her arrest. She said that she deserves whatever time she gets. Then, she joked to the officers, who were obviously in a very somber mood after making this heinous discovery. She said, cheer up, at least you caught the bad guy, with a very subtle grin on her face. She clearly isn't too torn up about what she did to her own parents. Um, I've slipped a pile of those into his drink. Um, there were about two or three drinks that I brought downstairs. Um, and... Yeah, they were basically, uh, he he didn't drink all of them. He only drank probably about half of two. But, um, yeah, when I went in in the morning, this was before my mother, uh, when I went in the morning, early hours, I got up about half an hour early, about um, six o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning. I came in and he was gone. He was well, gone. Okay. It's... Um, it's up to you if you want to talk. Yeah, but the thing is, purpose of your arrest, um, <laughs> purpose of your arrest is for, for a prompt, effective investigation as well yeah, as by course, questioning you. Course, we can't do that here. It needs to be done at a police station, all right? I did know that this would kind of come eventually. Um, it's proper that I serve my punishment. So, but yeah. Okay, so Virginia, I'm just going to ask you this. This is what I've written down based on the information you just told us because what we regard as a significant comment because yeah. you've made well, it up on, under caution half your arrest. By the way, you're part of, that's yeah, my granddad's. Okay, right. So I've written this, please. Um, I, Virginia McCulloch, have, inf have informed Police Constables 77329 Brown and 79387 Bowers after entering my house on Friday the 15th of September 2023. That I murdered my father, John McCulloch, who was st stated was under a bed in the rear ground floor of the house, and my mother upstairs in a cupboard next to the sink. Wardrobe. It's a double wardrobe. Right, okay, I've written double cupboard. Wardrobe. It's like four wardrobes, but it's the one nearest the sink. Double wardrobe. The cupboard. Yeah. What's significant as I've written down there, here now, or I've just read out to you, are you happy mm -hmm. to sign that to say that's a true, yeah. a true account? Yeah. Yeah, well, at least you caught the bad guy. I'm just I know, waking I don't up today and done my job. Like no. 
and I don't think not a lot percent either but we all <clears throat> yeah not I can't, I'm not going to comment on anything it's not my job to comment on it no. okay because I've got to be impartial with everything no. okay so I'm not going to give any comments no no well I mean I deserve to obviously uh, get whatever's coming sentence wise because that's the right thing um, to do and that might give me a bit of peace of course, at this point, Virginia is taken into the station and charged with the murders of her mother and father. She admitted to it, and their bodies were discovered right where Virginia said they would be. By that point, their bodies were so decomposed that they could only be identified via dental records. Virginia killed her parents, then lived with their bodies in that home for over four years. It's just horrific. So, um, next bit is very hard to talk about. That's probably the most grisly detail. Um, so, on the um, ground floor, underneath the stairs, um, there's a few, like, storage boxes and things. Um, and uh, in the middle, um, I think it's in one of the boxes or in a bag or something, um, there, um, um, uh, if you want me to shush up this, it's fine. Um, but every bit helps. You'll, you will find forensic bits helpful. There's a hammer. Uh, I know, I know, I know, but I'm, I'm trying to help so you find everything. It's in the middle underneath the stairs. It will still have blood on it. It's rusted, but it will still have blood traces on it. At this time, we know the what. We know that she killed her parents, but we still don't know why. So, after making this gruesome discovery, police started investigating why this happened and pretty quickly, they had a good idea. Upon her initial arrest and officers interviewing her, Virginia claimed that her mother, Lois, was a violent woman who screamed at her, abused her, and slapped her until she was around 13 years old. Officers also spoke with siblings about these claims and how they were raised generally, and while the siblings do agree that they grew up in a strict household, they all deny these claims that Lois was ever physically abusive. They said that they grew up in a loving home with very old-fashioned parents who raised them to the best of their ability, but they were never abused. Of course, their childhoods weren't perfect, nobody's is, but nothing in their lives was bad enough for any of them to want to lash out like Virginia did. Now, like I said, Lois had a hobby of writing back and forth with pen pals, one of which she had been writing for years. In one of these letters, she started telling a pen pal that she was concerned over possible fraudulent bank transactions and scams. Turns out, Lois's concerns were valid because someone was scamming her. Like I said, Virginia told her parents that she was working as a web designer, she was making money. However, that was not true. Virginia had been unemployed since 2017 and was continuously stealing from her parents to fund her lifestyle. She lied to everyone around her, making up lie after lie, tricking her parents and the rest of her family into thinking she was a completely different person from who she really was. In total, Virginia had racked up about 60,000 pounds of debt during the two years she spent unemployed while they were still alive. Officers have stated that they found evidence that showed Virginia was desperately trying to hide this debt from her parents while continuing to put them in more and more debt. She maintained a, quote, elaborate, extensive, and enduring web of deceit over the course of months and years while living with her parents. They called her an intelligent manipulator who was able to keep up with these lies for years. But... Once that all came crashing down and she could no longer hide what she was doing, she killed her parents to keep them from finding out. Then, after their deaths, she continued using their bank cards to dig them into a deeper and deeper hole. In total, she had spent 150,000 pounds of their money. According to police, she didn't use this money to buy herself lavish or expensive items. 21,000 pounds of it was gambling debt acquired between 2019 and 2023. Basically, she tried telling officers that she felt trapped in her parents' home, and that apparently is why she killed them. But in reality, she was trapped in her own web of deception and lies, and she clearly valued money over the lives of those who loved her most. 
Then, after killing her parents, she continued this charade, manipulating even more people around her into believing they were still alive. And this lasted years. After being arrested, Virginia did ultimately plead guilty to her charges of the first-degree murder of 70-year-old Lois and 71-year-old John. At the sentencing hearing, friends and family members spoke out about just how badly these murders have affected them. John's brother, Richard, is appalled at the level of evil it takes to do what Virginia did. He called her a very dangerous person, saying that she has undermined his faith in humanity. Virginia's siblings are also completely shocked about what she did. They couldn't believe their own sister could be so cruel, so uncaring, so calculated to kill their parents, then manipulate everyone around them for so many years. And let's not forget how brutal the murder of her mother was. She beat her with a hammer and then stabbed her multiple times. That takes pure evil to be able to do that to someone who loved you and raised you your entire life life. They went on to say that their parents were robbed of their retirement, their children are robbed of time with their grandparents, and they're robbed of spending any more time with their parents, all because Virginia felt entitled to their money and entitled to their lives. The judge in this case said that Virginia's actions were a gross violation of the trust that should exist between parents and their children. He went on to say, quote, I'm sure a substantial motive for each of the murders was to stop your parents discovering you had been stealing from them and lying to them and to to take that money that was intended for them. In the end, Virginia was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 36 years served before she will be eligible for parole. She actually said in court that she is a happier person inside of prison than on the outside, which I guess makes sense. I mean, she was unemployed, she didn't want to work or do anything for herself, so now that she's in prison, I guess she doesn't have to worry about any of that. One of the prosecutors in this case spoke to the media after the hearing, saying that Virginia is a master manipulator who lied about every aspect of her life. She is a cold-blooded killer who didn't even think twice about murdering her parents, all in the name of covering up what she did. Good afternoon. Virginia McCulloch murdered her parents in cold blood. Her actions were considered meticulous and carried out in such a way as to conceal what she had done for as long as possible. These were the actions of someone who had taken time to plan and carry out the murder of her parents in the interests of self-preservation and personal gain before living within metres of the bodies of her two victims for a number of years. Throughout the course of our investigation, we have built a picture of the vast levels of deceit, betrayal and fraud that she was engaged in. It was on a shocking and monumental scale. McCulloch lied about almost every aspect of her life, maintaining a charade to deceive everyone close to her and clearly taking advantage of her parents' goodwill. She is an intelligent manipulator who chose to kill her parents callously without a thought for them or those who continue to suffer as a result of their loss. The details of this case shock and horrify even the most experienced of murder detectives, let alone members of the public. It therefore follows that the wider family of John and Lois understandably could never have guessed or anticipated that McCulloch would be capable of undertaking these murders before committing herself to this level of deceit. They have been left utterly devastated by the circumstances of this case and they continue to feel the loss of John and Lois each and every day. With this sentence and with all that we have uncovered throughout our investigation, we hope they can now start to find a way forward with their lives. At this point, that is all of the information we have on today's case. As I said earlier, this case has been going wild in the media, and I can definitely see why. It's hard to believe that anyone could live with two bodies decomposing in their own home, let alone those bodies being your own parents. 
than to be so cold and callous about it. It's just unbelievable. I do see how and why this case took so long to come to fruition. Again, I think it was a combination of the fact that John and Lois were pretty introverted, plus COVID really worked in Virginia's favor. No one was leaving their homes, even for holidays and family events, for a year or two, or some people even longer, especially with their age. It probably wasn't a surprise that they weren't leaving their home for a couple years during COVID. At the end of the day though, I am happy that someone in their lives noticed their absence and decided to take action. Had she not been stupid enough to hide their bodies in that home, who knows how long it would have been to bring justice to these two victims. But that is where I'm going to end today's case and now I want to know what you all think about all of this. Why did Virginia do this? Do you agree it was because of the money and her trying to cover up for what she did? Why do you think it took so long for their absences to be discovered? And why do you think she chose to live with their bodies like that for over four freaking years? Let's discuss this and any other thoughts you have in the comments below. If you liked this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to turn that notification bell to on so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Make sure to follow my Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. All will be linked down below. And if you have any case suggestions, please make sure to fill out the Google form, which is also listed down below. With that, I hope you guys have an amazing week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time.